Here we've seen a lot of days in the 40s, mm -hmm. and then the nighttime gets really cold and freezes. Yeah, those nighttime lows dropping below freezing can make for a dangerous situation. Uh, Lindsay Boach is out this morning, and she's explaining why that's a dangerous situation. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, guys. Yeah, it's actually uh, the fluctuation in the temperatures that we've been having. We've gone from warm. I mean, next week it's going to be in the 50s, but this isn't really giving a, the ice a chance to freeze. So if you're thinking about going out there, you need to be very, very careful. Darren Smith, the assistant chief at Tri Township, joins us now, and we have kind of a demonstration that we're going to do here in a little bit. But why is this so dangerous? Uh, the main reason, like you said, that the uh, fluctuation in temperatures, you know, you have warm then cold and warm and cold. Um, it just doesn't give the ice a good chance to form, get real thick for you. So it makes it a more dangerous situation. Speaking of thickness, how thick does it have to be to get uh, to go out on it? A uh, general rule of thumb is if it's less than two inches, uh, don't go out. Okay. Uh, they like to general rule of thumb again is uh, three inches to four or five inches. That'd be good for ice fishing. Uh, if you're going to take a four wheeler out or a snowmobile or something like that, it needs to be at least six. So uh, you also want to remember that uh, if it's six inches in one spot, it doesn't mean it's going to be six inches throughout the thing. So you need a real hard freeze for that to happen. We have we just haven't had that. How do you know how thick the ice is? You're going to have to make a uh, hole uh, somewhere in the ice. Uh, preferably close to shore, just to get a gauge on it. Uh, just making a hole and then taking a tape measure, feeling with your uh, hand, stuff like that. And it's important to remember that the middle of the lake or pond or wherever you are is going to be thinner than the outsides. Um, right. What are some important things that people should remember if they're going to go out ice fishing? Uh, there's some real important things. Uh, never go by yourself, be one thing. Always have somebody with you. Uh, let let other people know where you're going. So if, if you're late or something like that, they know where to go looking for you first. Um, you always want to wear a lap jacket. Lap jacket is going to save your life. Uh, if you fall into the ice, uh, some weak ice, and you fall through, you're not going to be able to get yourself out. If you don't get yourself out in the first two, three minutes, uh, the cold's going to take effect, and you're you're going to lose your strength, and you're going to be uh, you're going to be stuck in the ice till we get there. And now we have a dummy out there. He's got a life jacket on, which is keeping him afloat. Adam, go ahead and go on out there and rescue our dummy. And then just explain a little bit about um, everything that we have here, the, the whole process of the rescue. Okay, basically what we have, we have some ice rescue suits. Uh, Adam's going out there right now. He's going to uh, go in away from the dummy, and then he's going to come up behind him uh, and then hook in, and then we'll pull him out. We also have another firefighter here, uh, Paul Mason. He's got uh, another suit on. Uh, that's our backup, so if something would happen uh, bad, we can go in there and get our own, our own guy out. Uh, we do a couple, we do some other things also before we would do this. Uh, first thing, we're going to try and reach them. And we have pike poles and ladders, stuff like that. We can't reach them, then we have some throw bags mm -hmm. that we can throw to the victim. And then, of course, what we're doing now is we call go, and that's going out there to get the, to get the victim. I think a lot of thing, or one thing that a lot of people don't really think about is how cold that water is going to be once you get in it. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievably cold. Uh, the bad part is if you're walking on ice and you fall through, basically your first thing that's going to happen is you're going to fall through, of course, and then the, the cold water is going to hit your face. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, the natural, uh, the natural reflex is you're going to take a deep breath in. Mm -hmm. And then when that happens, you're going to get a lot of water and, it ho and it's going to go in your lungs and then it's going to keep, it's going to make you uh, uh, not be able to do the things you need to do to get out. All right. Thank you very much for all of this information. And another thing, uh, you know, you hear about car accidents and things like that where uh, your phone might go flying. But if you're in the water, your phone's not going to work. You're not going to be able to call 911. So that's why it's really important to have somebody out there with you as well uh, so that they can call 911 and get the rescue process started. Right. And a special thanks to Adam this morning who yeah. braved that water <laughs> three, three times. times today to rescue that dummy. <laughs> Well, actually, their suits are, are really warm, I'm told. Uh, he was debating whether or not to wear a sweatshirt under it or a t-shirt under it. So he's probably a little bit warmer okay. than actually we are this morning. Wow. Well, really good information. Great advice. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Oh, no problem.